Hi everybody, I think we're live, I think we're rolling, I can see people coming in from the lobby. Welcome, big warm welcome. Uh, my name's Laura Hill and I head up Cloud Essentials in our UK region. And yeah, it's my pleasure to host this session today. I'm joined by uh, my very tech savvy compliance colleague, Navasha, who is going to uh, present the content today. Navasha, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Navasha and I'm the compliance lead for Cloud Essentials. So just a bit about me, um, I'm an internationally certified compliance practitioner via the International Federation of Compliance Associations, uh, as well as a designated compliance practitioner via the Compliance Institute of Southern Africa, or KISA. Um, so I have experience within the financial services industry as a knowledge management consultant, a commercial legal advisor, as well as a regulatory compliance specialist managing compliance across multiple jurisdictions and under the purview, no pun intended, of local and international regulators. So good afternoon and welcome. Thanks, Nirosha. So agenda for today, um, the session is really designed to increase level of understanding and confidence in one area of Microsoft Purview uh, and Microsoft Purview we'll, we'll talk about shortly, but this kind of suite of solutions from Microsoft around data governance, data compliance, focus on compliance manager today. And we think it's generally underused and we've seen it bring a lot of value to clients. So we want to just share some of those insights with you. So aim is that you will leave today having a better understanding of where it lives within the, the solution stack, why it exists, how to get practical value from it, um, how it can support overall governance strategy and kind of find a place within existing process and technology um, and roles within the organization and how to interpret what you're seeing from it so that you can really start to have much more meaningful conversations with colleagues around taking action on risk. So that's our objectives today. Um, the format is going to be mics off as we work through the content with Navasha um, during which we'd love to capture some input. So keep an eye on the chat panel. We're going to do um, a couple of Slido polls and please type questions as you go. We will make time at the end and we'll we'll come off record and lift um, lift mics off uh, to tackle questions. Um, but yeah, put them in the chat as we go. If the flow works, we will um, answer them as we go through. But yeah, please do please do interact as we go through. So just uh, very quickly by way of introduction, just to set a bit of a scene as to who we are as Cloud Essentials, we are presenting this topic today as very long standing Microsoft partners, really specializing in uh, professional services around data compliance and data governance with, within the Microsoft Cloud ecosystem, which for a lot of our clients, this is a very growing, very strategically important platform. So first and foremost, we help our clients really create those conditions within Microsoft 365 for minimizing risk. So protecting sensitive data, applying retention policies, um, good practices around permissions hygiene, et cetera. Um, but also part of that is often helping organizations consolidate data into the Microsoft 365 um, ecosystem. So we work with clients often on quite complex migration projects, perhaps coming in from document management systems, legacy email archives, um, file shares, SharePoint um, into the Microsoft 365 platform. And yeah, all about sort of helping organizations manage that risk um, of that data, but ultimately also unlock that value within their content so that it can be surfaced as, as useful knowledge, you know, which is where a lot of our clients are going um, and sort of heading towards using generative AI to do so, but wanting to do that at minimal risk. So our business model is typically to work with clients over a longer term. Um, so through this kind of journey of their of their content through Microsoft 365. And certainly where we stand out from the crowd as a Microsoft partner is that we're certainly not all about just deploying the technology. We're about really bringing in those specialist skills to help our clients get business value out of the Microsoft technology, which can sometimes be more about 
people and process and, and policy than just the feature sets themselves. Um, so having a team of technical specialists, risk specialists, compliance specialists, and a, and a very meaningful methodology is very much part of our approach. Um, Nivasha, just want to give a little bit more colour to, um, to that approach. Sure, thanks, Laura. So, our, uh, so I think what sets us apart, as Laura said, from, from your typical uh, technology deployment partners is really um, our compliance methodology. So my team and I, we've developed a methodology which um, you'll see later can be translated into a five-step process. And what we really look to do is help organizations mature their compliance stance by leveraging technology. So we don't just look at implementing and forgetting or implementing and leaving. We really want to see how we could uh, how we could benefit your holistic strategy. And to do that, we, we looked at incorporating some best practices um, in the assurance field, and that is uh, ensuring that all controls implemented, as Laura mentioned earlier as well, addresses people, process and technology uh, within an entity. And secondly, ensuring that controls always involve an element of combined assurance. So if you're joining me from maybe the risk or compliance environment specifically, I think combined assurance had a very specific meaning there. But within our methodology, we're really looking at taking management and operational teams, your assurance functions like risk and compliance, um, and marrying that with technology and other service providers in order to create uh, an efficiency and in order to create holistic controls. Um, so that's our methodology, and I think that really sets us apart from your from your typical technology partners. Um, that later then, as I said, translates into a uh, five-step process, and we do things a little bit differently. Um, and that's basically because we've learned that serious progress with Microsoft Purview adoption takes commitments from our decision makers, or your decision makers rather, uh, committing to people process technology controls, um, as well as supporting your policy and strategy development. So you would require a constant supply of skills and capacity to execute, and that's why we run our services as a 12-month program via a subscription-based model. So when compared with fixed-term services, this delivers more value as we really become your outsourced purview provider uh, working as an extension of your team. Some of the benefits our clients currently see is um, delivery against a structured long-term program. Um, you get input from experienced assurance professionals. Um, you'll be guided by lessons learned from our engagements with previous clients, uh, as well as a really specialized Microsoft focus. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that we look at your people, policy, and process, um, and not just your technology recommendations. So really, you get a holistic service. Um, and that's what we look at delivering through our Microsoft Compliance Accelerator. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to hand over uh, to Laura, who's going to take us through just um, some Microsoft specific considerations around technology uh, and how it impacts your compliance and governance. Thank you. Yeah, so I suppose what we wanted to do is just get on the same page to begin with before Navasha takes us on a much deeper journey through Compliance Manager, and that is to acknowledge uh, some first principles of using Microsoft 365 within the shared responsibility model. So this is what you signed up to um, in using Microsoft 365, that Microsoft will manage your data in terms of the, the law of the land, you know, the, the regional data centers that are used, and they will take responsibility for the physical security risk there and the applications that are provided and the application level controls um, within the platform. In this SaaS model, you're responsible for your data, you know, and therefore the risk that your data might present to your business and whether or not you're operating within acceptable risk tolerances or not. So you're responsible um, for managing your data, who's got access to it, any protections you put around it, for example, encryption, those endpoints, those, those devices. And Microsoft gives you very, very powerful 
market leading uh, features to manage a lot of that risk. There is a huge amount that you can tap into, um, particularly around security, but this family of solutions um, that has been heavily invested in by Microsoft, specifically around data compliance and data governance, um, the, the purview solution stack. But it's really down to you um, as the organization to take advantage of those features. So Navash, if you just move us on, just want to familiarize with what we mean by by purview for some some context um, before you zoom us in. So um, the the purview in a, in a very brief nutshell, this product family name for Microsoft's set of features for data compliance, data governance, lots of linkages as well with security solutions. But if you look at the stack of, as a whole, it's actually very much designed to be put in the hands of non-technical professionals to use as well, which Navas is going to um, emphasize today. But just to, to orientate um, what we're talking about here in purview from left to right, you know, firstly, there's features there to uh, help you discover data within the environment um, or maybe connectors um, to, to other data sources as well that could represent risk um, so that you can make better informed decisions on what you want to do about it. So where have you got sensitive data lurking? Where have you got data that's outside of retention, et cetera? And then moving on to features to apply protections to that data. So perhaps that's uh, more at the perimeter level with DLP, or maybe it's more advanced um, protections at item level, individual documents um, using information protection to, uh, to put protections on them wherever they move within the environment or outside of it. Then more advanced feature sets to actually pick up on risky user behaviors um, that might lead to data breaches, be them accidental, be they malicious, um, and detect and tackle uh, behaviors before, um, be more proactive uh, before any damage is done. And then controls are there to help you with lifetime, uh, life cycles of management of data, your retention policies, your disposition policies, and uh, records handling. And then compliance manager, which is where we are focusing today um, to help you benchmark against regulation standards um, and manage your sort of incremental improvements that you're you're making with the controls. Um, and also just lastly, there the e-discovery tool set, which is more around um, sort of reacting to maybe subject access requests, um, internal e-discovery, um, sort of fulfillment of, of searches in a much more uh, efficient way. So these latter two, less about designing and deploying feature sets, more about using what you've got out of the box and wrapping sort of people process around um, native capability that's available to you. So yeah, that's it in a, in a very brief nutshell. Um, a lot of very powerful features there. As I said before, Microsoft have invested very heavily here and continue to do so. You know, they really have got a quite a progressive um, roadmap and direction of travel with a lot of these um, features. Um, so, and a lot of it's there sort of waiting for you to, to tap into. So just a quick um, poll I'm going to do now just to, she says, um, yeah, just to get an indication from the audience today as to um, how often you actually venture into the Microsoft Compliance Portal, which is the, the window um, for all of these feature sets and how familiar you are with it. So if you are up for it, and you can see that in the Slido just there on the right hand side um, to give us some feedback. You can do it anonymous, anonymously if you want to. Navasha, just checking, are you seeing the results come up? Not yet. Okay, I can see some votes. So we've got 36% never, but I know about it. Uh, a couple for never, what is it? Where is it? Hopefully that will change <laughs> in the next half an hour. 14% um, using it frequently. Yeah, so a mixed bag, but uh, you know, there's not not a huge amount that are really are using it frequently. Okay. Navasha, what is it? Where is it? Why should we care about it? So I definitely would have been in the what is it? Um, <laughs> 
uh, poll. Uh, that would have been my vote a year ago, definitely. Um, <laughs> so thank you for that honesty <laughs> to our compliance and risk professionals. Hopefully uh, after the session today, you'll have a little bit more uh, idea on the Microsoft Compliance Portal and specifically um, the Microsoft Compliance Manager. So what I'm taking you through or what you'll see on your screen now is uh, the interface where you'll find Microsoft Purview uh, features. And unlike the bulk of the administration of um, your Microsoft tenant and just being able to say that it's a mouthful for non-technical people, uh, this, this part of it is really designed for people like uh, me, uh, non-technical people that are still responsible for data compliance and governance. And I think especially over the last year or so, we've seen how technology plays such a huge part in that overall data governance. I don't think one is possible without the other. We've seen it being entrenched in legislation as well, ensuring there's information security controls, um, you know, things like ensuring the integrity of your data, the, the security of your data. We're moving beyond just, um, you know, protection of PI into security of your data. And I think um, that being said, it's, it's very difficult for compliance and risk professionals to shy away from technology. So I, with that being said, uh, I'm going to introduce um, just some of the features of the of the compliance manager portal. Uh, what you'll see here and what Microsoft's really done is they've clustered around specific themes. Um, so what they're trying to do is show you that because your data is living in Microsoft uh, data centers, you need to know um, and your regulators need to know what Microsoft's doing to protect your data and comply with laws. Um, therefore, the Microsoft Service Trust Portal was created so that you can also see a Microsoft internal control framework. So if you want more information on that, you can always go to servicetrust.microsoft.com. Um, through regulation mapping, you can also assess your compliance posture against many national and international laws. And I'm going to get I'm going to unpack that in a little bit more detail as we go along. Uh, what you'll also see, and again, will be unpacked in some detail, uh, is improvement actions and suggestions on controls. Um, and if you're like me and you've only managed your controls one way through a GRC system, I think having uh, access to a tool like this where you can actually see your system controls is really empowering as a compliance professional. Um, you could also centralize your documenting, uh, your documentation and your controls, as well as allocating responsibility for controls. So that's in a nutshell, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail around where it is and, um, you know, what, what are you actually seeing? So compliance manager can be found within the Microsoft Purview Compliance Admin Center. So it's on the left hand um, tab. You'll see we have a little note there pointing to it. Um, so you can also just get it at compliance.microsoft.com. However, uh, your global admin will need to grant you the correct role access for you to be able to see uh, things like your compliance score and just ensure that you have the relevant permissions to, to look at some of the features we'll I'd be unpacking today. So as you can see, front and center, as soon as you log in, is your compliance score. And I think for a lot of people seeing something below 50%, especially compliance professionals, it's a it's a little bit daunting and, and, and you'd wonder, OK, what does that actually mean? So let's unpack that a little bit. So what is your compliance score telling you? Um, and as I've mentioned, it is featured prominently on your home page, on your dashboard. So I think uh, if you had technology professionals looking at this, they think you're doing a, a very poor job if you are under 50%. But actually, what does that mean? Um, so the score is really based on the built in Microsoft 365 data protection baseline. Um, and that baseline draws elements from um, in this cybersecurity framework, as well as ISO 27001. Um, it looks at things like uh, FedRAMP and also GDPR regulations. So what this then, uh, or what the system then does, it is scans your system um, for Microsoft 365 solutions, uh, for existing rather Microsoft 365 solutions, and then gives you an assessment of your posture based on the pr privacy and security settings um, you've currently enabled. So if you're a risk professional, you're probably thinking, OK, but the technology teams have done this. What does that have to do with me? 
Um, but really, it is based on your overall posture. And I think that's why compliance managers are so integral to fostering that combined, combined assurance. Because I think before, uh, personally, before looking at the compliance manager um, and the metrics and how to actually move this needle, um, my um, probably my level of involvement with technology uh, stakeholders would have been fairly little. But what we're trying to get is for organizations to see how important that interaction and that collaboration is between these um, between these teams. So to my right of my score, you can also see a list of key improvement actions um, that need your attention. So the view that's currently on display it really shows you the top actions that you can take to improve your compliance posture and the results it will impact on your score. So it has a built in risk based approach to ensure that you're focusing on, um, you know, your most high high value items first. So once you take the actions that they, they that's recommended um, and you update it accordingly, the solution will continuously scan your environment and flag anything that needs action. So it, it's really helpful having something so without having to constantly run monitoring exercises with something a little bit more automated um, that can really help give teeth to your compliance policies uh, and really help move um, you know the needle on your compliance. So what the system also does is it organizes your suggestions or your improvement actions um, based on whether it's mandatory, whether it's discretionary, preventative, detective or corrective. So that also gives you a steer as to, um, you know, what should be done first. So that's just an overview of the initial interface. Um, but if you scroll down the page, it also gives you a breakdown. So a lot of what I'm talking about now so what you can also uh, see lower down on the page is uh, a breakdown of your score by category. So you can um, it'll be broken down into how you're protecting information, how you're governing information, um, device management, and it really allows you to easily understand the contribution you're making. So whether you're in a compliance role or a technology role, um, it really helps you show how you're contributing to the overall organizational um, compliance uh, landscape of your organization. So how is it calculated? Um, so a, a controls are assigned a score of a value based on whether they are uh, based on whether those controls are mandatory or discretionary and whether they are preventative, uh, detective or corrective. And I know that that terminology is not new to um, specifically GRC professionals, but I'm going to just unpack it a little bit. So your mandatory and discretionary uh, control. So your mandatory controls, I think that goes without saying. These are actions that cannot be bypassed, either intentionally or accidentally. Um, so an example of this would be centrally a centrally managed password um, policy that sets requirements for things like your password length, complexity. And I think this is something that we all deal with on our daily, you know, in our daily life. Uh, so users must be able to comply with these types of requirements to access the system. So that's a perfect example of a mandatory control. Uh, if I describe a discretionary control here, it's where uh, it relies upon users to understand the policy and then act accordingly. So, for example, a policy that requires users to lock their computers uh, when they leave. Um, that's a discretionary control because it really relies on user behavior. Then if we move on to preventative controls and these address specific risk, for example, um, protecting information address using encryption is a preventative control against attacks and breaches. There's also here you'll see a separation of duties or separation of duties is also a preventative control to manage conflict of interest as well as guard against fraud. So detective controls actively monitor systems to identify irregular conditions or irregular or suspicious behaviors that can uh, translate into risks. Um, so it can be used to detect intrusions or determine if a breach occurs. So system access, auditing and privileged um, administrative action auditing, etc., are types of detective monitoring controls. Um, regulatory compliance audits are a type of detective control used to find issues as process issues as well. Uh, I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you, so again, please drop your questions in the chat as as I, as I go along. 
Um, and then lastly, corrective controls really try to keep the adverse effects of a security incident to a minimum. So, to so taking a corrective action helps to reduce the immediate effect and reverse the damage um, if possible. So, privacy incidents, uh, a privacy incident response is a corrective control to limit damage and um, restore systems to an operational state after a breach. Um, so you'll see this is just an explanation of how these uh, controls work together. Sorry, I should have been clicking as we go. Um, you can see I'm really not a tech person here. Um, but uh, as you can see, the controls, so not all controls, um, you know, carry the same weight. Obviously, mandatory controls uh, and preventative controls carry more weight uh, given the risk or the nature of the risk that would materialize in the event of them not being in existence. So let's move on to when you should um, review it. And if you're a compliance professional, I think you're always reviewing your controls. Um, so I don't think there's ever a case where it shouldn't. And that's exactly what uh, I think as Cloud Essentials, that's exactly the approach we prescribe as well. Because uh, as you can see, the compliance tool, it is a powerful tool throughout the various stages of your GRC process. So whether you're in your, um, you know, you're just still busy defining your regulatory universe, whether you're busy with your compliance risk management plans, uh, or whether you're implementing controls and you're mo monitoring your, your outcomes, it, it can be used at every stage of the process. Um, we also found it particularly helpful in the reporting phase. So as you as we said earlier, to kick off, um, you will see your initial score that is, um, you know, based on the Microsoft 365 data protection baseline. And this really assists with understanding exactly what controls are in place currently. And it, it usually serves as an excellent basis for a control gap analysis. So as we mentioned earlier, um, the different data protection requirements already incorporated into this baseline includes the EU GDPR, the NIST cybersecurity framework, um, and the ISO 27001. So it gives you an immediate sense of where you stand on the compliance um, spectrum, given how universal most of those requirements are. So by providing this breakdown of controls, as we saw on the previous screen, it also helps you decide uh, what you can do to move forward. But it also, uh, you know, it takes it a step further uh, by employing this risk based approach to your improvement actions. Um, your compliance score, it also helps you along your control implementation journey by directing you to improvement actions that will lower your overall risk and um, increase your compliance score. And as we all know, monitoring is a key part of any GRC process. So uh, it's not enough to just implement controls uh, or implement and forget. You need to actively check the adequacy and effectiveness of a control. Um, so your compliance score already enables you to do that from a single interface. Um, it enables you to implement improvement actions, um, it, and it really helps um, assign those improvement actions to your users. So promoting collaboration and some, uh, you know, um, collaboration but amongst our teams, as well as uh, helping to centralize your compliance activities. So each improvement action that's provided on the baseline also provides recommended guidance that's intended to help you align with that reg that specific regulation. Um, that improvement action can then be assigned to users in your organization to perform implementation and testing. And you can also store documentation, notes, um, and record the status updates within um, the environment uh, and within that improvement action. So I know there are many GRC tools that do this, and we're going to unpack that in a moment. Uh, but last but not least, um, the compliance score allows GRC or governance risk and compliance professionals to report on the progress of their compliance or their risk programs, as well as direct um, or direct future compliance projects, as well as techno technological deployment. So I think as a compliance professional, you're no longer relying solely on um, your technology teams to give you this input. You can actually go in and really empowers you um, to actually track on, track where your progress from a technology perspective as well as from a compliance perspective. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to hand over back to Laura to just get uh, a little bit of feedback from you. Uh, you're on mute. 
Marie. Yeah, some of the polls have started now um, just to ask what or tools are already in play out there. It's always a question that we ask. Our aim is to kind of meet organisations where they're at in terms of process, technologies in play already, how the Microsoft that kind of might add to that, complement that. Um, so yeah, if you were aware of existing technologies that you were using already to manage and kind of get some of these metrics, um, it'd be good to, to hear from you. I'll just pause a moment. We've got a not sure which is often actually the answer we get when we ask the question. <laughs> so just to elaborate, um, what we're asking here is, are you using things like Ban Owl, um, Cura, or you know, any other similar compliance type tool um, around, you know, just to help you manage and track? So whether it's for your compliance risk management plans or whether it's uh, for monitoring, just any any tools you might be using right now. We've got an Excel spreadsheet. That's a common one. <laughs> yep, too common. No tools. No tools. Um, some existing features, um, Microsoft features, but not third parties. Yeah, bit of a mix. The dreaded Microsoft uh, Excel spreadsheet for managing compliance risk. Then. Well, keeping it, keeping <laughs> it in the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Perfect. Thanks, everyone, for participating. So. Why we, we asked that is really to, so where, where you were at. So I think a year or two ago, probably I would have also responded Microsoft Excel. You know, that, that was the probably some of the, the key tools in conducting your compliance risk management uh, plans and just tracking uh, your, your risk universe, et cetera. But I think my next few slides is going to show you why you should care a little bit more about Microsoft Purview and specifically um, Compliance Manager. So especially because there are all these tools, there's quite a, a wide range of GRC tools out there, but also there is still some resistance amongst um, compliance and risk professionals around embracing technology to manage um, compliance obligations. And a lot of the, a lot of the time um, we, you already might have this tool at your disposal. I mean, a lot of organizations are using Microsoft and have access to some of the baseline templates, um, but unfortunately they, they haven't used it. So because the bulk of your company's data is already transacted to uh, via Microsoft, it's using Purview is often just an extension and really helps you just uh, use it for your data protection and it helps create a unified compliance solution um, so that you can stay on top of your compliance requirements uh, without having to introduce the new tool, if I can say, because you're already using, you're most likely already using the Microsoft feature stack. Um, so the compliance manager, it really gives you visibility to empower insurance professionals. And I know I touched on that earlier, but I just wanted to um, quote a report that I read a little while ago uh, from Thomas Reuters about the cost of compliance. And given at that time, so this was in 2019, there was around 220 updates per day uh, from a thousand regulatory bodies all over the world. So staying on top of this would be a huge challenge, whereas things like the compliance manager and our baseline templates, they update automatically. Um, so you know, it really helps you to stay on top of it. Um, it also makes it easier for you to understand existing controls. So again, as a compliance professional, understanding what technology policies you might have in place, um, detect indicators of risk uh, by flagging those improvement actions, defining the type of actions required um, and assigning ownership of controls. So no longer just sending off a spreadsheet to, you know, your CISO, but rather just working with him on a on a interface um, and being able to to do things in real time, even though it will update overnight. But I mean, you know, just being able to have that collaboration uh, in real time is, is quite valuable to most organizations. So this really uh, helps drive momentum on the journey of uh, deployment of technical controls because we do find a lot of organizations start on the journey and you know they hit blockers along the way, either from compliance teams or from uh, technology teams or just from a lack of collaboration amongst those key role players. So as I covered um, earlier, 
you'll see that even if you haven't set up anything in your compliance manager tenant, um, the Microsoft 365, um, you know, default data protection baseline is already collecting signals. So whether you care about, you know, going through this process or not, it's already happening in the background in your environment, most likely. So why not? Um, you know, use uh, use the software that's already at your disposable disposal. Sorry. Um, so some of the the actions that you can take, or some of the actions that you can take uh, via the the software, is really um, build, um, in, uh, checking your compliance score, uh, monitoring your improvement actions, and I know my Laura touched on this earlier, but really checking what's managed by you, checking and also checking what accountability Microsoft takes um, in helping you with your data privacy and your governance requirements. Uh, so some of the technical actions that you can uh, complete using technology and mechanisms um, are really um, multi-factor authentication, encryption, or checking your role-based access control. And then some of the non-technical actions are more around um, checking for things like your security policy or your internet communications policies. Um, some of the operational actions you can take is um, some examples would be protecting your incident or, or checking your incident response plan, uh, providing anti-malware training, and then modifying access or authorizations or un, uh, unauthorized, um, unauthorized access um, to your data. So actions, again, can be managed or can be viewed from uh, what's Microsoft managed, what's customer managed, and then what's shared between you and Microsoft as well. So again uh i think i'm just gonna take you through if if you haven't been uh, convinced yet so let's just go through a little bit on uh, some of the benefits of using the compliance manager and essentially we've um, we believe they're fivefold so it helps you assess your compliance posture against several international and regional uh, laws that we touched on earlier and helps you via that baseline to measure your progress it, hope, it also helps you gain insight into Microsoft's internal control framework and see what Microsoft is doing to protect your data um, and comply with standards and laws. And this is especially more useful um, as more and more uh, workloads move to Microsoft Cloud. So not only does Microsoft make recommendations on how to comply, uh, which each of these with each of these laws and standards uh, and how to leverage um, technology, but it also illustrates how implementation of one control can meet requirements of several other laws and standards that may apply to you. Um, that really helps you to avoid the duplication of effort. So if you were an entity that needed to comply with uh, the GDPR as well as working towards your ISO 27001 certification, for example, where one control can be leveraged across um, both assessments, um, compliance manager will um, pick that up and really avoid duplication of efforts from your side as well. So as I mentioned earlier, um, it it helps you, uh, it empowers you in, on your compliance journey um, to with to collaborate with both your uh, compliance, security, and technical teams. And it stays current um, by documenting what controls have been implemented already, um, identifying what steps needs to be taken, and allocating responsibility for implementation to individuals within um, your organization. So in addition, uh, the templates that I'm referring to on, on compliance manager or the assessments rather are constantly updated and provided by Microsoft to manage your compliance with existing laws. So it really enables a compliance manager uh, or, or helps a compliance manager by removing that burden and ensuring you know, you're constantly updating um, by having your system or, or the tool do it for you. So in addition, compliance manager also allows you to create custom templates or use universal templates for managing compliance uh, with non-Microsoft ecosystems or other requirements or laws that may not be included in the tool or might not be, um, you know, specific to uh, to Microsoft or to privacy requirements. So, for example, industry-specific codes of conduct. And finally, a compliance manager becomes a secure repository for compliance documentation. 
So I think often we find in big organizations that things are saved in, you know, in, in various team folders or, you know, Windows folders. And then now a lot of people are using SharePoint and things like access control becomes difficult. But really uh, having a central repository re enables users to upload and store records into the tool. So you could also upload um, any third party audit reports, for example. So if monitoring is being done outside of Microsoft, so if it's a it's a it's a typical um, you know risk or compliance monitoring activity, you could take the outputs from there and store it within that control as well. So it really provides a place to protect vital documents, but also enables you to demonstrate compliance should you get a regulator visit um, as well. So. Yeah, um, and I also we always feel this need to to elaborate how the compliance manager or how the purview stack benefits both compliance professional as well as IT professionals. So we found from an IT perspective, it really empowers IT professionals to engage with assurance professionals and in and execute on minimizing risk using Microsoft purview. So it enables, um, you know, uh, assurance and IT professionals to make um, informed decisions around the deployment of your technology as well as helping them prioritize because I mean uh, we all aware of budget constraints um, around deployment as well as ensuring there isn't you know business disruptions uh, and often I don't think one person can make that decision having a tool like this where uh, it opens the doors for that collaboration um, really helps the organization to make decisions based on what's beneficial for the organization as a whole and not just pushing either compliance, um, you know, the compliance strategy forward and leaving one and the IT strategy behind, for example, because I think that's something we we find often either we approach by uh, compliance pan, a compliance team uh, wanting to push this further or a technical team. And um, for us, we always encourage them to talk to each other. And, and I think that's a pivotal role that we also try and play for our organizations, just um, giving that professional guidance as we go along. Uh, I'm going to pause. I don't know if there's any questions or anything yet in the chat. Nothing. OK, all good. So let's move on to something a little bit more practical. Um, around how should we use it and I and I hope as we went along uh, with the webinar um, you looked at things like your compliance score like your improvement actions uh, st document storage and you identified uses use cases within your organization so what I'm going to do now is just um, show you a little bit about the navigation of um, you know the compliance manager and how it can be used by non-professional I'm oh, sorry by um, non-technical uh, professionals. However, we have found that to give you a proper demo on Compliance Manager, it could take hours. There, there's so much of, um, there's so many assessment templates, there's so much licensing considerations, uh, you know, unpacking improvement actions. There's so much we could do with the interface itself. Um, and in an attempt not to, uh, you know, shortchange it, I am not going to go through all the features in detail now. Um, I am just going to take you through, I think, wh what is a key feature. Um, and, you know, so as we've spoken about throughout, um, it, and uh, is the interface, apologies. Um, so what I'm showing you right now is the compliance manager interface. Um, and I'm going to just try and demonstrate how easy it is to navigate. Um, unfortunately, um, I'm having a little bit technical, a little bit of technical difficulties with getting the video to work, so I'm going to be talking you through it instead. Um, so on your home page, what you will see uh, the compliance manager home page right at the top is the overview. So your compliance score, uh, the improvement actions, which we touched on earlier as well, solutions, um, assessments, regulations. So there's quite a comprehensive list of regulations and it's updated. Um, I think daily or as and when by Microsoft as well. So you can go through that list and check, uh, pull out what's you know applicable to your organization. Um, because usually, if the regulations there, there's an assessment that's most likely you know developed to go with that. Um, then there's the alerts and the alert policies. 
So if you were to click on assessments, um, what you would see is a library of over, I would say, uh, my last check was around 350 assessments. So here, what you really can do is you can select them as is, because if it's something uh, more universal, um, so the GDPR, for example, you can select it as is, or um, if you want to do um, the GDPR plus a few other regulations, you can also modify and build your own custom assessment. Uh, I know we unpacked this previously with an organization where we discussed things like uh, financial legislation. So how would we track uh, things like uh, FICA or AML requirements that, you know, because there's also that document requirements and system requirements around uh, keeping financial information. So um, this tab, the assessments tab really helps you to build. And again, if you would like us to, to demonstrate that, we could also have a session with you where we take you through the process for building your custom assessments. Uh, so this the assessments tab, um, it, it also shows you or you're able to um, list or track your organization's compliance score denominator um, and it shows you what your compliance score is based on. Um, so if you if you look below the compliance score, it tells you you can learn how your compliance score is calculated, but also to your right, um, the actions that went into determining that compliance score. Um, in addition, there is the library. Uh, there is a library option, so you can go in and you can view and add templates as you go along. Uh, you can either modify or build new assessments as well. Apologies. Okay. Um, what I also found particularly helpful is you're able through your um, through this interface. So once you've clicked on assessments and or if you're going through your improvement actions, you could also assign improvement actions directly from the compliance manager. So if I were to assign an improvement action to Laura, for example, what would then happen is she'd get an email on her side advising her of this improvement action that she needs to now go and look at. Um, and then once she clicks on it, she can go in, update that action as well as, and track or add in any documentation. So it really helps streamline, I think, uh, a compliance and risk professionals um, plan. So if you're doing a compliance risk management plan, it really helps streamline that process. Um, instead of you sending out individual emails or requirements, you can send it out directly from the system. The person can respond um, and that will again get tracked directly on the system. So it really eliminates a lot of manual processing um, and a lot of back and forth on email uh, between uh, collaborators. So with that being said, I'm going to hand over uh, back to Laura just to take you through some of our quick wins. Thanks, Navasha. Um, yeah, so just to kind of draw the session to a, a close and summarise some of the kind of quick wins um, that we think and that we've kind of heard from you today, Navasha. You know, I think what's coming across is it's a great starting point for um, different roles to just venture into Compliance Manager, go and check out the Compliance Score be curious about it, if anything, just to be maybe a bit of a catalyst um, to instigating some dialogue, some activity that could potentially make quite a high impact on risk across the Microsoft 365 environment. You've told us about those uh, baseline assessments as that quick win there waiting um, to be used for some of those very uh, core uh, regulations and the means by which using those assessments become a much more efficient than using perhaps um, static manual spreadsheets um, before moving on to sort of more advanced templates. And yeah, thirdly, as is always our finishing rallying cry <laughs> for cloud essentials, uh, you know, really that, that message about this not just being an IT function gig, you know, the biggest value from these tools across the whole purview stack, uh, compliance manager, um, no different, just coming from that collaboration between compliance, risk, governance, leads, working together with IT, um, so that the, yeah, the activity within compliance manager um, is done much more as a, as a team. So just to say a big thank you, I've put in the chat, um, some links and I'm just going to kick off a quick survey now. It'd be really great to get your feedback on this as a session and any further information that we can provide for you. Um, 
But as Navasha said, if you want help understanding what compliance manager is telling you in the here and now, we can certainly facilitate that. And there's an offer there to spend an hour with Navasha and um, Johan more from a technical perspective to unpack what you're seeing. As Navasha said, um, the, there's so much to demonstrate. And often what we find is it's so much more relevant to do so upon a little bit of background as to what your current process is, what your regulatory landscape is, therefore which templates are going to be more relevant, which areas of compl compliance manager are going to be more relevant. So there's an offer there on the table to, to spend an hour with us um, to sort of have a little look and, and help familiarise yourself with what you're seeing there within your own context, which is hopefully much more useful than a, than a generic demonstration. As always, uh, you know, subscribe got a lot of uh, content coming um, your way over the next couple of months. Um, latest one today is a blog to support more strategic um, sort of C-suite conversations about using Purview and building a business case around using some of the technologies across Purview, including Compliance Manager. So you can check that out. Uh, so I'm just going to launch a feedback poll. It'd be great if we could hear from you. And then we are going to stop the recording and, and you're welcome to come off mic and fire into the chat any questions um, that we can cover off and we'll do so here and now if we can or we'll take them away and come back to you. Um, but other than that, we'll, we'll close out and say um, thanks very much.